Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series called Roadside Falls. Uh, this is over in the Flat Tops by Meeker, Colorado. And um, today was blocking. We started with a blank canvas and 30 minutes later we had about 99% of it filled in. So the big challenge today was to how to make a rectangle, or I mean a vertical, uh, painting into more of a horizontal painting. So I call it, we have to be wonky and kind of imagine how to spread this thing out in our brain and make those, make those shape changes, which we, I think, successfully did today. So, we put in thin value colors. Don't go heavy with the paint yet. Uh, let's just try to figure out where the shapes are going to be and put in thin value colors. Okay, enough of me. Hawking. Let's get to uh, part one. All right. Thanks for coming by. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to part one of a three part series titled Roadside Falls. Um, this is over by Trapper's Lake uh, by Meeker, Colorado, up in the flat tops. And uh, what we're doing here today is uh, I'm going to use a term called wonky. Um, you can see my reference is a little bit more vertical and my canvas is more horizontal. So one of the lessons today is how to make that um, a little bit more horizontal. I'm going to call this uh, Roadside Falls B because I did a smaller version of this in the more vertical way. And I want to kind of spread this out and um, see if I can do this on a wider canvas. I'm uh, working on linen, uh, Clausen 66, and um, so that's uh, my materials. I have my home row keys here. I think I have an addition. I have a third blue, which is a phthalo blue. I have my normal reds uh, that uh, you see here my uh, warms, all these things that can make nice, beautiful greens. I have a cold gray, transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown, titanium white. I think I'm ready to go with mixture. First thing I want to do is uh, make some line shapes of where things will be, particularly when you're going from, uh, you know, um, vertical painting to a horizontal painting. You want to spend some time getting those shapes in the right place. Do you want the, where do you want to have the uh, waterfall? And I think I'm going to have that a little bit to the right of center and a little bit below center. And I'll have the little bit of a catchment pond down here and then a little waterfall below that. Then I have a big hill coming in here with um, trees. All right, so let's uh, make a mixing color. So let's go uh, blue, brown, or red, this transparent oxide red. I'm just going to water that down and get a drawing brush. And what I'm going to use is a uh, Da Vinci number, oh, it's pretty small, Da Vinci number three. Looks like it was a filbert, or a flat, and it's turned into a filbert. So I probably want, here's center right here, somewhere in here I think. So I want this to be a little bit left of center, the waterfall, a little bit below. So I'm going to have a waterfall come here and make a pond. and then a little bit of a waterfall maybe over in here. That might be a little low, so let me see if I can raise up everything just a little bit and have more room for the rocks down below here. So I'm going to use this line and take out these. 
Nice thing about linen, it can sure erase easily. All right, so let's make a shape here and I'll make it a little bit larger area here and kind of step it up over here. All right, so here I'm going to have a pine tree type guy and maybe kind of smaller than that. And so he'll be up in here somewhere. And then I'm going to have these banks. I like these. I want to get some bright color on these ba banks here. And then I want to have some good dark trees here up in this area. And another one here. And I think I want another pine tree. Kind of the base is hidden here if you look at the reference. So what am I thinking? I'm just trying to figure out where these shapes are going to be as a wonky this thing wa uh, wider. <clears throat> so I know that I've got to have some big honking rocks coming in here. And here. And I'm just making some ideas for for rocks. And <clears throat> I can see a rock. I don't know if you guys can see a rock yet, but that's where I want to be on this thing. Okay, so now I'm going to have hill coming in. And I have a really good dark, I think, really right in here. It's a little guy. I think it's a little pine tree. But he'll be right up in here. I want some good dark. And I want room for a lot of rocks down in here and here. Let me get some more. Good rock ideas in here. This might be too bold with the bush. I gotta move him back. And you can see how I'm composing this. I just found this little waterfall next to the road as I drove up. It's almost hidden till you stop and go over and look at it. I think what I'm going to have is down here waterfall coming out of there also and I might do some more rock designs to break them up. All right, I need more imagination up in here. So I have here kind of just vegetation. This is, this is like aspen behind the pines. So there are kind of a different texture up in here. There's just a whole bunch of aspen. And I might think about getting another pine tree over here just to balance out the darks. And Put another pine tree up in, in this area here. And I might put a little pine tree, because I see it in the reference, maybe up in here. I think I need a little bit more meadow type stuff up in here. So I've got canopies and then I have a 
sky holes up in here. Then I have lots of aspen coming down. So we'll have like aspen boughs coming in here. I sure like working on this cloth since it's nice stuff. Okay, now let's get busy with different brush. I mean, this is good for what it's made for. It's making little defined lines and so forth. But I think we've got to get a little bit uh, huskier with what we have in the way of, I've got to look for maybe a more of a moppy type thing. So I'm going to use a rosemary long filbert uh, 278. And let me make a, oh, I think I have to start stepping back before I get too invested in this thing and make sure I'm in the right location. Looking good. The only thing I'm worried about is, did I make this too high now? Let me see if I can... This is kind of an outlet design right in here. And I'll make more of an angle here. So it's not... I got a pretty flat line on top. I don't want to kind of duplicate it. And maybe I'll put a little bit more lake over to one side. What I mean by that is uh, the water can go, this is the kind of the base of the water here, and it can kind of go off the canvas a little bit. All right, that was a little bit too wet. Had too much turp in that mixture. All right, now let's get, let's figure out some of these darks. Let's go ultra blue. Transparent Oxide Red, Transparent Oxide Brown, Blue, Brown, and let's uh, go off to this side and add Yellow Ochre, Yellow Ochre, Yellow Ochre, and add a Viridian, Viridian, and white to one side. That's a nice forest aspen color. So it's just basically I took out of that big dark there by adding yellow ochre and just a touch of viridian. Look what you get, you get a pretty nice uh, aspen color. So I'm gonna dip this in turp and I wanna try to Figure out where these darks are going to be. So, um, being that this is block in, I'm going to go in pretty light. In other words, I have a lot of turp in here. And it's going to go in pretty thin. That's a little too goofy. And let's get this guy in over here. Nice thing about putting stuff in thin, you can always get rid of it later if it's not in the right place. And then I want to have this guy big old fella back in here. He's not quite as dark. Did you see that? Because he's a little farther back. And these are pretty bold fellas over in here. And they come down just above the falls. And then this guy even starts below the 
falls. Get a little bit more turp in him. A little bit more brown, a little bit more blue. And I think I've got some shadow coming through here, so I'm going to thin this down with a little bit of this green and it's kind of a gray I put putting in here for a shadow. I think there's more of it coming through in other places too. And now I want to get to the green stuff and start working on these upper canopies. And again, my mixture is very thin. Good start on here. Fill in this canvas to get this part one going good. I see more of this darker ominous stuff over in here. So it's more of the mixture of the, the green and the blue brown. Just a good background color is what I'm trying to do here. I think this is the lower falls right here. And I'm going to thin this even more. I'm going to keep her thin. But I just have a good background color. Let me do it back. Okay, good. And I'm about 15 minutes into this. And let's go with some lighter color. So we still have some of this green left. Let's get some uh, yellow in it. And some white. Some yellow. And this is um, Hansa Yellow Medium that I just put in there and some white. I'm going to try to clean this brush as best I can and add some turp to this mixture and get the lighter stuff in here, even this early. So now what we want to do is get kind of an olive color into this water. Um, so it's kind of a, all of it has something to do with yellow ochre, blue, yellow ochre, throw some viridian in there. More yellow ochre.
Okay, that's coming in nicely. Oop, I just overdid it. Let me see if the mixture will take it out. I need a little bit more blue in there. A little bit more Viridian. Boy, that Viridian is strong. Oh, here we go. It's coming in right now. That's good. Can even go bluer. Sorry for putting my head in there in front of the camera. Okay, now we're talking good stuff. I'm going to go back to this number six filbert I have been using. Better remember to put that stuff in thin here. And I've got rocks coming out into the water too, but I don't need to worry about that now. And I think there's some sort of an outlet in, over in here too. Maybe I'll put another little waterfall in this area. There's actually water coming out in various places here. This is going down more. Okay, I'm going to lighten this up a bit. For now. All right, now it's time for worms, okay? So might need all this stuff later. I'm going to mix it all together, see what I can come up with. It's pretty thin stuff. Pretty gooey. And let me clear my glass for a new mixture. And you always hear me preaching about controlling your palate, so you don't have smaller and smaller mixing areas. Okay, let me get back and take a look at this and see how it looks. Getting back is a big deal in this business. So, to make a warm, I think, for this particular guy is to go transparent oxide red. and white, and white, a little bit of orange, and white. Okay, there it is. Bingo! That's pretty close. And let's see what I've got with a straight, good, strong edge. So I'm going to use a number five Da Vinci. It's a flat, <clears throat> pretty stiff brush. Stiff. Just a little bit of turp. And I'm going to just imagine some rock designs here. using the side of my brush. And I want to go up and I want to make them smaller as I go up. And I'll get darks in between there later. And then I'll put some rocks over here. And then I'll have some transition rocks going this way. And I'll even put some rocks down in here. And I'll keep them a little higher on this side. Okay. Let me get some rocks down in here. It's a great big rock right in here. And then the little guys.
and I think more rocks here and more rocks in here yeah I'm making that one up I'm running out of product so I gotta go back with a little bit more a little bit of orange and I'm keeping an eye on the time You guys are keeping me busy today. Another big rock in here and here. And I think I have some rocks that actually go out into here. I'll just make marks for them now. And I might as well put a rock over in here and here. I don't know, that might be too much. Okay, now we have a really light side of the hill here, so it's getting a lot of light. So I'm adding more white to this, maybe a little bit of yellow, just a touch. Yellow. And that's the Hansa yellow medium. And you can see, not yet, that it is lighter. Let's see. Yeah, it's lighter. Yeah, I've got to make this a lot lighter than some of the rocks. And I think I'll put some down in here and here just to kind of give the impression of rocks and maybe one clear over in here. Maybe a few going down this way. I don't know yet. And I'm just going to don't have much left, but I'm going to thin it up here a little bit. Now, let's get rid of this warm stuff and get up into the sky and get that taken care of. We're starting to fill up this canvas pretty good. All right, I have a clean paper towel. I'm cleaning my, my knives. And I'm going to pick up some phthalo blue. Mix some white into it and mix it thoroughly. We've been using some warms in that brush, so I might be changing to a different brush. Clean that up a little bit more. And I'll go back to this uh, number six filbert. Rosemary 278, I believe. And I'm thinning it out pretty good. And let's see what we got. I think that's working. I'm trying to cover up the white coming through here as best I can and get in close without contaminating my brush too much. And get in here and soften some of these edges.
Well, with what little time I have left, what I want to try to do is go over into my slop pile that I had. I'm using a number two long flat series 279 and uh, fill in these where I have canvas coming through. And I'll be doing that off campus or off camera and going around looking for my peekaboo guys and covering up the, uh, the white stuff. That's my timer and I need to be bringing this to an end. I'll try to stick these to about um, 30 minutes. And uh, yeah, I thought I was coming up to the end, and there we are. So I'll be getting these little peekaboo guys covered up with a slop pile or with a dark dark. Dark dark again would be brown and blue. And, you know, getting some of those whacked in there. All right, so that's your homework. Uh, let's get ready then for part two coming up next. In fact, that will be tomorrow. And uh, I'll be letting... Uh, be stepping back and seeing what I need to do to improve the shapes if that needs to be done at all. I can see right now that I need to take these canopies off and bring more light in and lower some of these over on this side. Okay, that would be it. Thanks so much for coming by for part one of Roads, Roadside Falls and so looking forward to seeing how this turns out um, as we go along. All right, thanks so very, very much. And we will see you in part two.